Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a mystery thriller film, a conspiracy of faith. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a dark room, we see a captive child writing a letter. Then, he hurriedly puts his letter in a bottle. As someone else enters the room, the child quickly throws the bottle into the sea, and he gets caught by his captor. After a long time passes, we see the bottle drift into the shore along with other garbage. A passerby swimming along the shore notices the pile of garbage and the bottle catches his eye. As he picks up the bottle, an ominous foreshadowing of grim events begins. The following day in Department Q, we see a beardy detective doing some paperwork. Suddenly, his co-worker nicknamed Blondie enters his office and starts interrupting his work. She asks him to box with her, and he eventually agrees. After their boxing session ends, the detective calls his partner to check upon him. However, his call is left on voicemail. Suddenly, the department's boss arrives and assigns the detective a case. The case is related to the bottle that was found near the shores. The detective inspects the contents of the bottle. He sees the letter inside but can't understand it. He also notices that there is blood on the letter. Meanwhile, his boss reveals that the detective's partner is on sick leave. The boss leaves them so they can begin their work. He then asks Blondie to analyze the letter in their lab while he goes to check up on his partner. As the detective visits his partner, he notices that his partner is still troubled. So he decides to take his partner out for a walk. Meanwhile, in a farmhouse, the man is searching the farm fields while his kids are seen praying diligently. Then his wife calls him to get ready for church. The couple's children are then seen participating as choir members of the church. Suddenly, a man in a suit catches the couple's attention, and he is revealed to be a former priest nicknamed Priest Twist. The family returns to the farmhouse along with Priest Twist. As they have their reunion, the couple confesses about their financial decline and that they sold their farmland. Priest Twist understands the husband's frustration and he lectures the husband that family and faith are important when times are tough. Then the children enter the room to say goodnight. Suddenly, Priest Twist grabs the girl and asks if she will be the messenger for this region. The parents confirm that their daughter is a youth representative of the church, and Priest Twist praises the girl. However, the girl is creeped out by him and pulls away. She then leaves and Priest Twist decides to leave as well. As Priest Twist leaves, he parks in a secluded part of town and remembers the troubling past of his childhood with his sister. At the same time, the letter's analysis in the lab is complete. The detectives are in the office trying to figure out the contents of the letter. However, the partner doesn't help much as he is deep in thought. After they brainstorm, they realize that the letter might be indicating a kidnapping case. The letter then leads them towards a Jehovah's Witness school, and the author of the letter, whose name starts with the letter P, is catches the detective's attention, and he thinks that this missing kid's case is peculiar. He says that the reported missing kid cases in the past also have relations to religious organizations. His partner also tells him to be more observant once they start interrogating the people related to the case. The detective with his partner then heads to their lab to get the analysis results of the letter. After the forensics shows the deciphered letter, the detectives check the full details of it. They realize that not only one child was kidnapped. The duo then heads to their lead on the Jehovah's Witness school and asks the teachers about any missing kids. The teacher tells them that kids have never gone missing in school. However, she did have some records of a kid named Trave. She tells them that the children's parents filed for a school transfer. The partner then realizes that Trave had a brother. He asks the teacher for the brother's name, and she tells them that it is Powell. After the duo realizes that Powell might be the one who wrote the letter, they head to Trave's apartment to scold the kids, because the detective thinks that the kids just made an elaborate prank. Meanwhile, at another school, the farmer's children are walking home. Priest Twist sees them along the road and offers them a ride. The girl refuses his offer, but Priest Twist insists. At the farmhouse, the wife is tending to her grandmother just before she gets the kidnapper's call. She cries out in pain as she learns that their children have been kidnapped. Back to the detective duo, they ask Blondie to make a background check on Powell's parents. They learn from Blondie that Powell's parents have died from overdosing, and their death was discovered just after the school transfer. The partner then gets more certain that the kids are really kidnapped. Blondie theorizes that the parents' death must be a religious ritual. However, the partner states that Jehovah's Witnesses don't have such rituals. The duo then decides to head to Powell's apartment to investigate their lead. As they arrive, they see drug junkies in the room. The boy Trigger asks why they barged into their room, and the partner asks him about his brother and wishes to meet him. However, Trigg tells them that on their parents' death, his brother suddenly disappeared. He then tells the detectives to leave. After listening to Trigg, the partner concludes that he might be hiding the truth. They stake out Trigg's apartment and wait for him to confess. The partner thinks that since Department Q approached Trigg, he might have a chance to seek answers. Fortunately, the partner is right, as Trigg approaches them to see his brother's letter and confess. 
Meanwhile, at Priest Twist's home, after stashing the farmer's children, he surprises his wife with an unexpected hormone game. Back at Department Q, Trigg confesses that he and his brother Powell were kidnapped and abused. He also tells them that when his brother wrote the letter and got caught, he was killed brutally by the captor. Then the detective asks if he remembers what the captor looks like. However, Trigg couldn't describe the captor, but he remembers that they were held captive in a place filled with metallic noises. Another police station gets a call from a witness who saw the farmer's children get kidnapped. This case gets forwarded to Department Q, where Blondie discovers a neighboring town with a religious group. Unfortunately, the superiors of the agency refuse to authorize the investigation. However, the partner uses his sick leave as an excuse to visit the neighboring town. Adding this potential lead, the detective duo heads over to the police station for more details. The partner says that the religious group is mentally handicapped, since their beliefs are founded on speculations and conspiracies. The statement offends the detective because he is a religious man, while the partner is revealed to be an atheist. After arriving at the police station, they get the file leading them to the farmer couple. A woman joins their team as a local mediator and a guide for their visit to town. As they arrive at the farmer's house, they begin interrogating them about any missing children. The husband tells them that there aren't any suspicious events happening. Then the detectives ask to meet their kids. However, the husband tells them that they're not here. The husband then insists that they leave. The detective then leaves to continue their search for clues on missing kids. Back at Department Q, Trigg helps the detectives learn where the kidnapped children are located. He compares the recordings of different locations with a metallic sound to the one from his past kidnapping. Later that evening, the detectives take a break. The mediator and the detective enjoy themselves, while the partner is still focusing on work. The detective tries to urge his partner to date the mediator. However, the partner brushes him off and says he can't think of dating ever since his divorce. Then they receive a message from Blondie about the kidnapper of the farmer's children. They also learn that the kidnapper has a habit of kidnapping on religious holidays. Meanwhile, Priest Twist checks on the farmer's children. He sees that the girl is praying, but she stops when she sees him. He then threatens her to pray more to repent for her sins. Then, Priest Twist remembers his harsh past, where his mother scolded him for praying in another language. The detective then asks Blondie to make a background check on the farmer couple for any suspicious activities. Later on, they learn that the couple is preparing ransom for their kids. The following day, the team goes to the farmhouse and confronts the couple. The husband tries to avoid them, and he punches the partner. However, the detectives subdues him, and they explain to them that they need to cooperate as their kids' lives are at stake. The detective then begins interrogating the couple about the events before the kidnapping. The couple reveals that the kidnapper is an acquaintance of theirs, which gives the detectives a solid lead. The couple then explains to the detectives that the kidnapper will tell how the ransom money will be handed over in another town. The detective then proposes a plan to capture the suspect when handing over the ransom. The husband refuses their help at first, but eventually agrees because of his wife's pleas. The whole department Q then begins to make a large-scale operation to capture the suspect in the other town. Meanwhile, Trigg is almost able to identify the location of the captives. Once the plan is set, the entire department begins to put the operation in motion. Suddenly, Priest Twist calls the couple to begin the ransom money transfer. Then, the husband is ordered to head over to a train in the other town. As the police and the husband ride the train and begin checking for suspicious activities. However, the next order of Priest Twist is to throw the money bag off the train near the forest. The detectives then realize that he is not on the train. The husband is reluctant to throw the money and demands he gives his children first. Priest Twist then says that he'll only be able to get only one child if he throws the money off the train. The husband then gets desperate and jumps off the train to confront Priest Twist personally. The police lose sight of the man, so the detective and the partner try to find him and the suspect. Meanwhile, the husband runs to the destination of Priest Twist in the forest. He sees the car of Priest Twist, but finds it empty. Suddenly, Priest Twist ambushes him and cuts his chest with a scissor. Then, Priest Twist tells him that their deal is off because he collaborated with the police. The partner then sees Priest Twist stabbing the husband and chases after him, while the detective calls for medical assistance. Unfortunately, the partner is unable to keep up with Priest Twist. However, he snatches a photograph of Priest Twist's sister. That same evening, the detectives bring the husband to the hospital to get him treated. However, the failed mission makes the wife furious, and she blames the detectives. The mediator then comforts the partner and tells him he did everything he could. Unfortunately, her consolation is short-lived as Priest Twist calls the partner to inform the kids will die because of him. The partner despairs but realizes the call is a plot to distract him. He then realizes that Priest Twist is in the hospital targeting the couple. Unfortunately, the partner and his team are too late when Priest Twist manages to kill the couple. However, the husband makes a final request to the partner to save his children. 
The partner then orders his team to chase Priest Twist. They manage to corner Priest Twist in the parking lot. However, Priest Twist kills off one of the police officers. Then he knocks the partner out and kidnaps him. The detective tries to catch up to the partner and the others in the parking lot. However, he only sees the police officer dead in a moving car. Then Priest Twist heads over to the cage and he puts the partner there. Suddenly, Priest Twist remembers his childhood again, where he sees his sister was splashed acid on her face by their mother. This later led Priest Twist to kill his mother and ends up twisting him to be an anti-religious psycho. At Department Q, Blondie manages to determine the kind of location Priest Twist puts his captives. Thanks to Trigg, she learns that it is in a boathouse, but she doesn't know where it is. Blondie then tasks the detective to ask Priest Twist's sister if there are any boathouses he owns. The detective then arrives in the hospital where Priest Twist's sister is admitted. The detective tells her that her brother is a criminal and they want her cooperation in finding his boathouse. At first, she doesn't believe him, but she recalls the memory where he killed their mother, so she eventually reveals the boathouse's location. The detective then orders his team to rush to the boathouse location. Meanwhile, the partner wakes up to see Priest Twist. Priest Twist then introduces himself and tells the partner a revelation. He proclaims himself the son of the devil that fights against God. Ever since his traumatic experience of his mother's fanatical faith, he came to hate God. Because of this, his goal was to target households filled with faith, and he aims to shatter their faith by killing their children. He also believes that atheists are the mercenaries of Satan, so he tries to employ the partner. However, the partner tells him that he doesn't believe in anything, including Satan. This angers Priest Twist, and he drowns one of the children in the water. The partner begs to take his life instead, but Priest Twist continues to drown the kid. As the kid stops moving under the water, Priest Twist leaves him in grief. Fortunately, the partner holds hope in saving him and manages to escape with the help of the girl. He dies in to save the boy, and luckily, he saves the boy while he is thanking God. Meanwhile, the detective and his team approach the boathouse and he confronts Priest Twist. After a short struggle with Priest Twist, he manages to kill him and rescue the captives. After that incident, the partner starts to understand how life and faith should be well-balanced and nurtured with good intentions, so that the person won't become twisted and sinister. The film ends as the partner starts to become a man of faith as well, after seeing the benefits of having faith and hoping for good things to happen. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.